our devotion. Today is the epiphany of our Lord. And so we're going to be taking a look at the gospel, the appointed gospel text from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. And then also a short devotion on what epiphany is and what it means uh, for us today. Uh, I'm so thankful that you joined me today. Let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our reading is from Matthew chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler, who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly, and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you found him, bring, him, bring me word, that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way. And behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then, Opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. This is the word of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. The Epiphany season of the church here presents us with yet another opportunity to see Jesus as he truly is, our great God and Savior, the one in whom dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. We see Jesus' glory as the only begotten Son of God. We see it in his miracles, and we see it in his teaching. We see it even in his wondrous grace, in willingly coming down to earth in order to save the world. Jesus came to make the complete payment for the sins of all who had ever lived or would ever live, you and me included. In spirit-created faith, we see our Savior as he truly is, God over all, blessed forever. During Epiphany, it is important to be reminded that our Savior is the Almighty God who came with all power to seek and to save that which was lost. Thanks to the work of the Holy Spirit in our hearts, we now see and believe in Jesus as the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the whole world. Throughout Holy Scripture, we are repeatedly assured that Jesus is indeed God and Savior. In the epistle to the Hebrews, it is said concerning Jesus, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of uprightness is the scepter of your kingdom. You know, it's only been a few days that we witnessed our Savior as the lowly Christ child born in a stable, and laid in a feeding trough, a seemingly helpless little infant. Yet he who lay there was and is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. 
for by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. You know, it's sad to say that most people consider Jesus as someone less than who he truly is, God in the flesh. It is not only unscriptural to deny that Jesus is God, but it is also, bl also blasphemy. To know and to confess the true divinity of our Lord is essential for salvation. As we approach the coming of another Lenten season, we will once again bear witness to his death culminating in his resurrection. During Jesus' passion, the world sees him as a mere man, weak, beaten, and dying. The unbelieving cannot see his death as the greatest act of love and sacrifice ever known. They fail to understand that the only way forgiveness of sins and life eternal could be won was through Jesus' death as the sinner's substitute. Jesus did not die as a broken and beaten man, but he died as our Redeemer with a shout of victory. Then Jesus, calling out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. What humility on the part of our Savior. For he emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. And so I encourage you this Epiphany season to rejoice. Rejoice as with, uh, with the eyes of spirit-given faith as you see the majestic glory of our God and Savior. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We join with me now as we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me for this Epiphany edition of our devotion. I hope to see you again real soon. Until next time, the Lord be with you.